Ria Usa Wusu, Ratu Siriako Nadiwai, Ratu Marisilo of Matangali Rongua, Ratu Peni Dengei of Matangali Namatakula, Ratu Sivo Turimbi of Matangali Komawe, the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China, Your Excellency Zhang Ping, distinguished guests, Mulavanaka, and a very good afternoon to all of you. I'm delighted to be here today at the groundbreaking ceremony of the Wyndham Silk Road Art Hotel project. This is one of the very first projects that has started as part of the Chinese government's One Belt, One Road initiative. Under this master strategy, the Guangdong Provisional Government developed a new Silk Road strategy. The new Silk Road strategy is primarily focused to inter increase international cooperation between China and its trading partners around the world and in the Pacific. In line with this, the Guangdong province has allocated a sum of US dollar 2 billion for investments in the Pacific over the next five years. Ladies and gentlemen, we are glad that the Guangdong provincial government focused their efforts on enhancing the historical ties it has with Fiji. And through this, today, we are seeing the launch of the Wyndham Silk Road Arc Fiji Hotel project, a $500 million project which is a timely injection into, into the Singatoga economy. Investments of this scale are always a welcome addition to our economic landscape, especially in regions which have lacked investment over time. I understand that the Guangdong Silk Road Arc Investment Company Limited has a number of plans in the pipeline to contribute to the development of Komave Village through the creation of employment and new sources of income. Clearly this project reflects a huge vote of confidence in our national economy and is a means of enabling Fijian tourism to capture the lucrative growing Chinese travelers market. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2015, China had about 120 million outbound visitors, and they spent about 104.5 billion US dollars, which was an increase of about 12% and 16.7% compared to 2014. We are aware that the main driving forces for the increases include personal income rise, relaxation of travel policies of China, and the appreciation of the Chinese Yuan. In 2015, China was Fiji's fourth largest source market for visitors after Australia, New Zealand, and the USA. And the total number of visitors from China was 40,174, which is a tenfold increase from 2009. However, Chinese visitors to Fiji only accounts for 0.033% of the total number of outbound Chinese visitors or travelers. In this regard, investments in Fiji's tourism sector by Chinese nationals is welcome, as this will in turn lead to an increase in visitor numbers. It has been proven that Chinese travelers tend to feel at ease at resorts and hotels that are able to cater for their needs completely. Spending time at a resort or a hotel that is designed to their preference will provide a feeling of belonging and connection in a totally new destination. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wyndham Silk Road Resort is a 165-acre project where a total, with a total of about 370 rooms that will be built. The resort will also be equipped with cabins over the sea, a coast clubhouse, a gym, infinity swimming pool, and a thousand-seat convention center. The Fijian government's vision is to make sure the tourism sector turns into a $2 billion industry by 2020. And we can do this by focusing on high-value niche markets. Additionally, a thousand-seat convention center will further strengthen Fiji's position as a preferred MICE, as a meetings, incentives, conventions, events destination in the region. Therefore, today, we encourage and look forward to strengthening our relationship with China and connecting businesses and encouraging trade between the two countries. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, Fiji presents an opportunity to investors, the opportunity to invest in a country 
that is strategically located in the Pacific and is the hub of the region which provides the best connectivity both by air and by sea as well as advanced communications technology and a well-established manufacturing base. In order to facilitate trade and investment, the Fijian government has provided and will continue to provide a stable and conducive business environment supported by the streamlined investment regulations that encourages growth and development. The recently, recently announced national budget shows the Fijian government's determination and focus on getting the economic fundamentals right for business to thrive in Fiji so that our economy can grow the better and better the living standards of all our citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, on the investment front, both domestic and private sector and foreign investors' confidence has increased markedly. In the past three years, total investment has been over the benchmark of 25% set by the government. More importantly, 75% of the total investments are by the private sector, <coughs> which is consistent with the government's long-term growth strategy of diversification and sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, such the, the growth is propelled by the stable and consistent pro-business and pro-growth policies of the Fijian government. The Fijian government recognizes that the private sector investment is key to sustainable economic growth. Therefore, government is committed to modernizing our infrastructure and providing a conducive environment that contributes to a competitive, robust and resilient private sector. Ladies and gentlemen, such has been the confidence of Chinese investors <coughs> in the Fijian economy in the past few years that China currently is our biggest source of foreign direct investment. However, hence, in terms of investments in 2015, 41% of total investment projects registered in Fiji were Chinese projects, while in the first six months of 2016, figures reveal that about 45% of projects registered with Investment Fiji were from China. Most, Chin most investments, or most Chinese investments, are in the services and wholesale sectors. Fijian government values the confidence that the Chinese investors have in Fiji, and we want all investors, whether domestic or foreign, to know that we place a lot of faith in you and appreciate your investment in Fiji and the Fijian people. Therefore, we look for nothing but your true commitment to the overall vision of the Fijian government. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I wish to reiterate that the Fijian government encourages and supports genuine, high-value, high-quality foreign investments. This project will contribute to the advancement of economic relations between Fiji and China. The bottom line is that Fiji and China are historical trading partners, as I said earlier on this morning. And we can work together to reach the full potential of our relationship. We are looking forward to closer engagement, particularly engagement driven by growing investment and trade between the two countries. I'd like to, at this stage, to express my thanks to all those that have contributed to this success. And there's no doubt that Fiji is on the right track, which if maintained leads to a very bright future. And I also must at this time say thank you to all the, la all the landowners that have been involved in this particular project. And I wish you well in this particular project in terms of making you prosper. <coughs> I also wish at this particular time to a big wish to Mr. Chunjin Lee, Mr. Haolin Lee, and the Guangdong Silk Road Arc Company Limited. To wish them all the best in their inaugural venture into Fiji, and we look forward to further investments from the company in other sectors of the Fijian economy. With those few words, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to be at this groundbreaking ceremony today, and I wish you all well. Thank you very much.